Um, good morning. Thank you all for being here. We're going to present sustainability in the wine sector. Um, the, the main title is Wine and Interacts. So this is the idea that we're going to tackle today in this presentation. Is the introduction, uh, the introduction is uh, why we chose this topic, why we chose the wine sector, and why we chose it in Spain, and everything that you're going to see after. Sustainability in the wine industry, wine industry in Spain, some winers classifications, types of recommendations, and a takeaway message. So, why industry? Why the wine industry? The wine industry is a really traditional industry. It has been in the in our communities for a long time, and we we can see that the wine industry now is having more and more impacts in the different sustainability uh, pillars that are economic, environmental, and social. And uh, we're going to tackle this after, uh, when we talk about sustainability in the, in the wine sector, in the industry. And why in Spain? Because, of the, because it's an economic source, also it's an economic industry that um, encourages a lot of, of work for of, uh, um, development of economic in the people around. And the sustainability in the wine industry, why? We're gonna tackle the wine growing, that is the, the vineyard, and the, wine, the wineries, the buildings, and an, as, a, an, as an, a strategic decision, uh, I already talked about the three main pillars, that is economic, environmental, and social. Um, in the innovation has to be, with, again, uh, through these three pillars of the main sustainability actions. Now we're gonna we're gonna see uh, the ESG is environmental, social, and governance impacts. We're, we're based on this to build after the all the the types and the characteristics and the recommendations. In the environmental dimension, eight variables have been identified. The soil embraces the vineyards, and its quality is reflected in the wine. Water is a value. Therefore, preventive measures should be implemented, especially in the irrigation and cooling system that are critical in the water consumption. Due to the changes in the ecosystem caused by the winery's actions, biodiversity could be at risk. Wineries are considered as the most energy-consuming activity in the agricultural sector. The vineyards affect the climate change through the emission of greenhouse gases, and the increase in temperature impacts the quality of the wine. The industry produces a considerable amount of organic waste, mainly produced by the seed and skin of the grape that are highly polluting. As for the post-production waste, it has negative replications on the quality of the wastewater and the soil due to the high pH level and level of salinity. The waste in the use phase is harmful and is related to packaging that also increases the level of carbon footprint in the life cycle of the product. This is of interest for well-minded consumers and takes us to the social aspect where six variables have been identified. Ethical trading touches on the importance of fair wages for the workers in the supply chain. Codes of conduct are important for protecting workers' rights by providing them with security and equity regarding their working conditions. Alongside the trade comes the importance of the workplace. The production of wine presents considerable health risks like respiratory diseases from the use of pesticides and handling of machineries. The level of efficiency through training and capacity building sessions can be crucial. One of the issues that could have an important impact on the supply chain internationally is child labor, especially because of the seasonal workers. Consumers' well-being is an important issue that uses traceability and quality assurance as a guarantee for the credibility of the product. Engaging the community through long-term activities will enable the winery to acknowledge their needs and create a trustworthy relationship. Regarding the product that is an alcoholic beverage, it could represent a health risk for the customer when it is not consumed in moderation. Responsible advertising at the heart of the marketing strategy showcases the level of responsibility of the winery. 
The environment and social impacts are dictated by the structure and governance of the winery, stated in their mission and vision. Their commitment to sustainability is key for it to be part of the business strategy. Many multi-stakeholder initiatives in the wine sector include NGOs, governments, chambers, international organizations, media and universities. Communicating with these stakeholders through different channels is key. Websites, social networks, you know, tourism are some of them. Listening to the stakeholders through the development of an action plan should be measured and reported following international guidelines. Okay, so we have seen the environmental, social and governance variables that impact in the wine sector, uh, but not all of them have the same importance. Uh, so this is why we have prioritized them, uh, thinking, okay, how um, do different stakeholders consider their relevance? We have analyzed from zero being the stakeholder doesn't uh, talk about this issue, and four, uh, the stakeholders believe uh, this is a material issue, uh, and dividing it between the national and the international level. So here we can see uh, the six stakeholders that we took. Um, that uh, mainly uh, wine companies, we took the ones that have uh, sustainability reports uh, where they state the material issues and the report on their material issues. And there are other five stakeholders, uh, the other five stakeholders where they, um, they recommend good practices and um, different uh, codes uh, to the wine sector in order to be sustainable. So these recommendations are based on what they think they're the most riskful issues and the ones that have more importance to them. So now we can see the issues uh, rated being uh, the environment, um, the national and the international level are very similar. Uh, in both in, uh, environment is uh, much more relevant, uh, especially soil and water, uh, because they are the resources that are most linked to the production of uh, the wine and the, uh, they affect the long term of the activity. Social is not that important, but the one that ste steps out is a workplace, especially in the national level, because a wine sector influences the local employment, so this is a, a rated third a, in the national level. Well-being, we would think that it's a, really impacting because of the health in the consumers, but wine isn't perceived as riskful as other types of alcohol because it's much linked to the culture, so it wasn't like a, so highly rated. Governance also isn't very highly rated because uh, stakeholders perceive these companies as small and medium sized, so they don't pressure them in order to be um, such institutional, institutionalized uh, transparency processes, um, but this is a thing, uh, also a challenge. Okay. So regarding the wine industry in Spain, they are considered as the first producer in the world, the second in terms of volume and third exporter in the world. There are 3,900 companies and 89% of the winery export where there, there are mainly large companies. So uh, regarding the micro, small and medium sized uh, wineries, they have a benefit if, uh, when they adopt the PDO, the Protective Denomination of Origin, because they are following standardized production procedures that will help them enter the international market and build the Spanish brand. And the map, sorry, the map showcases a 60 uh, PDO. So how did you build uh, the five uh, types of wineries? So we looked for information about their sustainability practices and production in Spain. We looked at their CSR reports. So some of them were in the GRI website and not their, on their personal website. And we looked at the survey of, about CSR in the wine sector in Spain, Mercado de Vino. So uh, when we started uh, dividing the types, we took into consideration if they have a CSR report or no, if they produce uh, locally or internationally, if they produce only wine or they produce other products. And we came up with five uh, types that are focused families, variety SMEs, food and wine, national pride, international footprint that we'll, we'll be explaining with the recommendations. Focus families, we identified five, five family companies that have less than five brands, and for every, um, 
for every type, we have uh, outlined a reference company because this company has covered the most uh, characteristics we have identified in terms of sustainability. So when we talk about focused families, we talk about heritage, about culture, about this family being focused in, in the local, on the local scale, and we talk about a more, um, a closer bond with the community. So this is why uh, one of the recommendation was to focus on one communication channel and to take advantage of this bond with the community and try to tackle the social media and not only be focused on one uh, communication channel. And for them to take advantage on the fact that they are focused on the local aspect is for them to be a leader in one initiative. It doesn't have to be in several initiatives on the international scale. So take, profit, uh, take advantage of their strength. And uh, because they don't have a big budget, so money isn't everything in terms of community initiatives, they, should, uh, they could create a win-win situation by involving the workers in community initiatives and benefit, benefiting the community at the same time. In terms of the environment, they could cre create activities to protect the biodiversity in the vineyards, water conservation program and water management system, and substitute chemicals for organic fertilizers. The second group, the second type, is variety of SMEs. They are, these are um, four SMEs that produce more than five brands of wines. And the reference company is are Cuatro Rayas and Abadía Retuerta. And in between the recommendations, we, we thought that these two companies focus a lot in the social and the governance uh, aspects, not, not a lot in the, in the environmental aspect. They are uh, really marketing expert, so we, we thought that it was good if they can focus the existing channels that they use, that's a blog, press, social media, in the communication and in the communication as a transparency through these ecological brands that they say that they have ecological brands, like imagine one or two, and the, the rest of the, of the brands. So we wanted to be more transparent and why they are mentioning ecological brands only those two and why not the, the rest are ecological. So if, if something about the production or the pesticide that I use or something about um, um, mitigating some GHG gas or not using some chemical in some, product, some phase in the production, it has to be communicated. Uh, that's according to transparency. And also we thought about uh, the employees as ambassadors for the company in the capacity building and in according to environment, because they have a lot of, of brands of, of brands of wine, and we thought about um, recommending a packaging innovation. There are now um, there are really innovative packaging in around the world. There's one called Paper Boy that it's um, like a package of full of paper, full of recycled paper. That in the reverse of the bottle, you can see everything that you can do with that with that. Um, with that uh, recycled paper, you can put some in as a um, waste to energy, another to recycle again. And the ecological cork, this cork is made out of of, uh, of a tree that is not that polluted as a cork, as a regular cork. And the uh, next type is food and wine. These are micro, small, and medium-sized companies. They have um, brands of wine and of food. So as a recommendation, we thought about why, because they use a lot of, of, of production lines, so they use a lot, of, a lot of energy and a lot of water. Uh, we thought about recommending rainwater harvesting and putting it in some reservoirs so they can use it after and don't, don't use a lot of, and they consume a lot of water in their production on these, these, all of these um, uh, uh, products. Then organic waste as an energy source through biomass, uh, because they have a lot of, in the, you're gonna see after, that in the, in the wine production, there's a lot of, of, of organic waste. And the life cycle of carbon footprint, because it's always important to see that life cycle of the product in order to tackle the issues of where you are consuming more, how can you more, make it more efficient, and more, more, more of the things, how can you change in energies, um, promotion of work and life balance, 
And also a CSR report to consolidate all the information about all the brands and other products that they're using in one company. This type national pride is uh, made for, uh, from international large companies that produce many brands of wine and they have endotourism and they don't have CSR reports. Gonzalez Bayas is the reference of this um, type and what we are suggesting because of the large influence they have in the national level is to focus in re uh, research and development for sustainability, not only for quality, focus in packaging, in new products, uh, also in energy efficiency. Because they are the largest ones, they are the ones that could have m uh, more chances to have energy independence, so we uh, recommend that they use renewables in the vineyards and in the buildings. Also, they have a really good connection with um, the consumers because they know tourism and they could use this in order to build more dialogue to be the first step as, star uh, as starting to do stakeholder engagement that will lead them to do a CSR report that none of them have. Uh, also, uh, because they are really re uh, have a lot of influence in the consumers, they, they should do much more for responsible marketing that they are not doing. And a way of doing it would be partnering with uh, retailers to do packaging uh, awareness campaigns, for example, the recycling um, in, in the retail, in the retail uh, system. And um, another community activity that we were suggesting because innovation is so important in the wine sector is that they can promote this value in youth and also because of the uh, responsibility they have for being a large employer uh, to stress in training for the workers and the supply chain and focus on talent development. So for the last uh, type, international footprint, uh, we have identified three large companies that have a CSR report. We have chosen Miguel Torres and Pernod Ricard because uh, we noticed uh, that Miguel Torres was so focused on the environment and Pernod Ricard was focused on the social. So we wanted to say that they could like, learn from the mutual experience and balance in terms of uh, ESG, in terms of reporting and uh, communicating it. So. Uh, what we have noticed as well is that Miguel Torres uh, have, has a CSR report on the GRI website and it's, it's not uh, on, on the official website. And um, because of uh, the nature of this type and because they are multinational and have a power on the international scene, they should partner with pharmaceutical to research about the healing properties of grapes in curing cancer for the well-being of society and reduction of waste. And in terms of child labor, because they have this international power, like they should partner and create a platform to, um, uh, to suggest uh, improvements and uh, to suggest uh, joint efforts to have more, uh, more solutions for this issue that is uh, a general issue for the sector. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the carbon footprint calculation of their products and supply chain, it is not really clear. In, on their website and doesn't disclose enough information and the stakeholders uh, and transparency towards the stakeholders and uh, support global research on how climate change impacts in wine, se in wine sector. Okay, so to finish, we want to say some takeaway messages. Uh, we know that uh, Spain is already in the international market and is very well positioned, but it's mainly positioned for, for their quality and the competitive prices. We should think to add sustainability to, to these uh, competitive advantages because there are other countries that are doing it. This is why we think sustainability should, should start being included in the local practices and also in the local recommendations and in the local certification scheme to balance more between the social and the governance and not so uh, only focus uh, in the environmental. Uh, and uh, what we want to say is that these types uh, were used to recommend from what um, uh, the recommendations were based on what is uh, best to be done from uh, each type, from their strengths. But all the recommendations could be applied to all of the wineries, of course. Uh, and that we want to stay open and think about uh, this project as a, its global perspectives. Uh, this framework, framework could be adapted uh, to, to be applied in the wine sector in another country, for example, in Argentina, that it's also a very important uh, wine producer and exporter, or Libano, that is regionally also uh, relevant, and in Peru, 
that they produce pisco that is made also from, from grapes. So all of these practices could be, uh, all of these recommendations could be adapted to that context if we put a, a little bit of perspective. So thank you very much and uh, any questions? Um, we had another project yesterday in Mi'kmaq, in the, uh, you know the people in the uh, Master in Environmental Engineering? And um, it was very related what, with what you do. My first idea when you were beginning to speak about it is you can very, uh, I mean, say it. Um, what you've done and what they've done can be complemented. Absolutely. I mean, they need to know which Spanish wineries <coughs> are involved, which are not. Uh, because they have work more on the environmental footprint. Do you know the project? Do you know the, the guys? No. Ivan and uh, this guy Pedro and... Uh, no. 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 They've been working on uh, the environmental footprint initiative from the European Commission. And that's... Um, I mean, the I think we should speak together. <laughs> That's the first idea because it's um, when you mentioned, for example, Torre, Miguel Torres, uh, he was explaining Tuesday, Tuesday this week at uh, the Ministry of Agriculture about their initiative to have a label on their uh, wine bottles. And uh, it's, it, I, I agree with you that they're not advertising it on the website, there's not much information about it, but they're doing a lot of things and some other wineries that don't really know a word about this. And it's coming. I mean, uh, the, at least the European Commission is working on having on, by 2020 uh, a, market, a market for green products, and it's focused on environmental footprint, which covers a lot of what you mentioned. So I think y your ideas could be very useful to help what the other group in Migma have done, and what they've done could help you a lot to develop Furthermore, your project. So, congratulations for your work. And uh, as you said before, don't stop here. Like, try to develop it more because I think it's a good idea in a sector that is maybe a um, pioneering sector in trying to integrate sustainability in the business, especially <coughs> in Europe, where, uh, for example, countries like Sweden or Finland, they're already asking for products and companies who are who has this information in their um, yeah not only reports but information to customers so um, we can speak with you afterwards <laughs> thank you okay, sorry can I say one thing uh, that I think it's it's good your your point because uh, as you said uh, Europe is a uh, um, asking for this kind of labels and now the market uh, of organic wines is much more focused uh, from the wines of the new world like the California, Chile, South Africa, uh, Australia, Argentina maybe it's not so focused yet in sustainability but uh, Spain there have a really good challenge to to also be re reach the level of, of those countries and because it's near to Europe where this demand is being placed they could have their uh, competitive advantage. Okay thank you I, I have two quick comments first of all I think the mapping was great you know the beginning to, of, of categorizing the various uh, varieties of wine industries. Um, I think that that is a work in progress, that you could develop it much more and perhaps focus in very practically, make connections directly. That would have been nice to see. Direct connection with one group to explore how, they're actually, how they could or work with them on how they could actually develop that. I have one query, one question. At the beginning you, you talk about the three pillars, environmental, economic and social. And, uh, and then you went into uh, environmental, social and governance and there was no explanation of, of where did economic go and why did we move into governance. 
And I think the economic bit is really important because at particularly in Spain, the employment issue is crucial. So to have drawn that out, I, I think it was important. It kind of got lost suddenly. I think it was there in social, but maybe we could have called it social, did put social and economic together or something. But it, it just threw me a little bit, that move. And I would, I would like to know why you, why you did that, why you brought in the government selling it. Okay. We had uh, that also, uh, we talked about it uh, during the project, and we maybe didn't uh, reflect it in the presentation, but you will read it in the report. Um, the economic part, of course, wineries have a lot of economic impact in local communities and in GDP, uh, and, and their economic impact is, is, is really good. This is why we selected uh, this, um, this activity, and in Spain especially, because it becomes of importance. But uh, because the economic or the financial variables are the ones that historically wineries are looking at, uh, and they're already good at, like, good at it, the ones that are still like, going on, and, and, and they, they're developing new products, uh, marketing, uh, in entering new markets, like, they're already focusing a lot, and we try to focus on the ESG, that is the part that maybe the, it's not homogeneous. So uh, there are a lot of challenges there. So this is why we didn't focus in the uh, like financial variables, but of course, because of the economic impact to society of this uh, activity is why we chose it. So uh, yes, we didn't mention it explicitly, maybe because we were like yeah. so into it, but yes, that's it. That's a little complimentary question. Why did you bring governance in then? What, what was the rationale for that? Okay. Uh, we brought governance in because we are talking about, about wineries and you wanted to explain the structure of the winery, the mission and vision, how it functions internally because we're, we're talking about workplace, we're talking about communication channels, so it's internal and external. And the structure of the winery, how it is managed from the inside is really important to, because it dictates how it, uh, how it reacts to the outside as well. So this is why we talked about governance and we identified the four variables and we talked about it a little bit in details because we think that once we shed the light on these variables, it would be like more interesting for the reader and uh, easier to understand because it is uh, an important aspect. And just very briefly, um, well done, you've made it. Uh, great work with you. I think that um, I'm the one to blame for some of the things I didn't like in the presentation, so that's something we can discuss afterwards, but I'm the one to blame for that. And one point I would like to, one question I'd like to, to make is, uh, it gives the impression that given the wealth of information you reflected in the presentation, uh, that you've done a previous survey of like different alternatives to improve sustainability in this, in this uh, agro industry. My point is, after having a look at all the technological alternatives that are available everywhere in the world for this sector, what's the, the missing link? Yeah? Why are not these <laughs> technological alternatives used in some of these wineries? What's your insight about this? Do you want to Yes. It has many answers for different perspectives. I think uh, that what I said before that uh, maybe sustainability is not yet seen as like a differential uh, thing, at least in, in, in Spain. It's not like... Uh, Spain, Spain, Spain wine brand goes much more for innovation and from competitive price than uh, for maybe sustainability. And the innovation is much more linked to the building of the cellar or um, the, the, uh, the flavor in the wine. And maybe um, those technological innovations are the tradition of the the, the traditional characteristic of the wine activity makes them sometimes less flexible to see the wider picture in innovation. Like they want to be innovative, but they're still too close to the product. And they should like open the perspective because innovation could be like, as we said, in the economic, in the social, and in the environment, and not only in the bottle and in the product. 
So uh, maybe this is a possibility. Yeah, and um, yeah, I what we've noticed as well, like going through all the wineries is that, and it's really interesting, is that every winery has its own personality because of the owner, because of the structure, because of the taste of the wine. So this also has its impact on how they approach sustainability because the owner has a lot of, um, of responsibility because it's, it's a strategic decision if we want to, uh, to implement sustainability in our winery or not. So we think that it's like, it's an interesting question, but there's no one answer for it. And th this is what makes it exciting. It shouldn't be a copy paste. It should be like really personalized. And, uh, uh, and when we read about the sustainability of a winery, it reminds us of this winery, not of another winery. And this, this is what makes it uh, exciting and, and, thing, and not uh, a routine.